Pierce at 184. You got Far from Minnesota coming from the four seed. You see that Sammy Brooks from Iowa got upset. Um, Dominique Abinader, the number two seed, where, he, where they thought he would be when they started the tournament in the finals. He's a sophomore out of Gates Mills, Ohio. So he's back in his home state right here. And he's going up against Brett Farr. They met earlier, and Abinader beat Farr eight to seven on January 9th. So two months ago they met. It was a one-point match. And they meet again for the Big Ten Championship. There's Brett Farr from Minnesota, one of three finalists for the Gophers. Jay Robinson always in there. And here's the NCAA qualifier allocation. Big Ten 86. You, see that, you can see, Tim, at this weight class, there's 10 qualifiers here for the Big Ten, but we moved from probably the most competitive weight class at 174 to probably the least competitive, the number one seed here at the top. At the top, yeah. And it's deep. Yeah, it's deep, but the, the, the highest ranking wrestler was the number one seed, Sammy Brooks, who got beat in this tournament. And uh, he was like number eight ranked, you know, uh, wrestler going into it. So, you know, a lot of surprises in this weight class. Not a surprise that Abinader made it, but you could have got long odds on Brett Farr making it from Minnesota. Abinader, 20 and six, finished the regular season, ranked number 11 by internet. And he starts this one with a takedown over Farr. Yeah, Farr just has a nice pace to his matches. But it, it, he will, you know, challenge you all throughout the match. But uh, Abinader has the skills to be able to slow it down. A pretty good rider. Any opportunity that Farr has to shoot, he will go ahead and take it. He's in a good position right now. And he makes the big step, a nice roll through. Haven't seen anything like that in a while. Two wrestlers that came into this tournament going two different ways. Abinader has won 10 of the last 11 matches coming into these finals. And Brett Farr had left, had um, uh, lost four of five coming into the tournament. So it's a big turnaround for Farr and a boost in the arm for the Gophers. Yeah, I think you're gonna see turnarounds galore here from what's happened in this meet uh, to, to a, in the NCAA tournament. It's a quite, you know, it's it's not just a given that you're going to win here and win at the tournament, but the uh, there's guys that, that may have placed low down the ladder that have an opportunity to go ahead and place in the national tournament. We saw that all the time last year. Farr tried to go ahead and spin around on a nice single leg attempt by Abinader. He scoops the bottom leg, and when you do that, you're in a better position to go ahead and score. He hasn't got it all the way scooped, Tries to scramble up, right? Far. <laughs> he just, he just quit. He just didn't have. He just ran out of real estate there. Didn't, he kind of stopped turning and and uh, and uh, Abinader spun around a little harder, get on the top position. Now he's got the legs in. You're listening to Jim Gibbons. I'm Tim Johnson. We're in St. John Arena for the Big Ten Championships. 184 pounds. Abinader out in front of Far. So Michigan looking to have their only champion of the uh, championships here out in front four to one Your on their way to that. Pounds, it's early, we're in the first the period of 184 pounds. Time, yeah. Two sophomores going at it. There's the escape by far. And you know, Abinator has uh, gotten matches and, and uh, Nice set of scores here. Been able to score six points in both matches, but I notice that there's sometimes there's, he gets a lot of those points early and then you know, looks to hold on that. He's a decent enough rider and, and uh, can kind of uh, do what we saw in an earlier match, control the uh, the wrists and the shots kind of slow down a little bit. But uh, Far is a guy that just kind of keeps on marching into you. Things just get, keep getting tighter here. There's been a little recalculation of the score. And right now, Iowa and Ohio State look like they're just all knotted up at 120. Yeah, there's some big matches in this. Uh, let's see. Uh, so there's no Iowa or Ohio State going on at 184. And right now, the uh, score is going up in the head uh, above us. 120 to 120. And, one, and a takedown there by far as we're talking, and he ends up doing a nice job on that roll from there. Just, again, the more I watch him, I get a little bit more impressed with his progression through the course of the season, how he's just been able to keep his, uh, his, his pace going in the match, not worrying about it, just trying to score points. On mat number three, 
Abinator only a sophomore out of the uh, famed St. Edward High School program in Ohio. So many All-Americans, I think it's it's over 30 straight years that St. Ed's High School has had an All-American in Division I, 30 plus years in a row. Pretty impressive. But, uh, spans a couple generations at least. So you're looking ahead on the team score a, a little bit. You see this, uh, well, the match with Schiller and uh, uh, Burak will probably be an important one. And of course, Kyle Snyder at, at, at 97 having an opportunity to uh, perhaps help bring home the title in the finals with those four big points if he can win. And he's going against uh, uh, McIntosh from Penn State. And then Telford for Iowa is at heavyweight and he could answer. He could answer. And then at heavyweight, um, uh, Ohio State. Tavanello's out of the they, tournament. He's out of the tournament. And so it's going to be as close as it's ever been. Coming down, we're at 184 pounds. There are no Iowa or Ohio State wrestlers on the mat for the top uh, f uh, six places. Well, Tom Ryan's the master motivator. Again. Guy that the code to get into the Iowa, the Ohio State wrestling room was what 1951, ah. the last time that they won the conference championship, and it was before St. John Arena was built in 1956, and so obviously there's never been a Big Ten championship won in this arena. Brett Farr and Abinator, Dominique Abinator in a tight duel right now, five to four. 58 seconds left. Notice how the pace that is kind of taken over as far as that, you know, Far likes being in high scoring matches. He's been able to go ahead and put up uh, you know, 12 points in his first round, seven points the next. Abinader in on a shot. Far is making him pay for a little bit down there, stuffing the head. Both for him to go ahead and maybe work back into a counter shot. Again, nothing really fast and explosive with these guys, but uh, you know, they're, they're progressing in their seasons as sophomores and, and uh, now a conference title on the line. Far sophomore, as you said, out of LeSueur, Minnesota, LeSueur Henderson High School. Two guys that uh, may see a lot of each other in the future, but they've got a lot of body to put weight on. I mean, you may see them up at uh, a higher weight because uh, particularly with Far with the Schiller coming out. Yeah, you know, it's Schiller's last year as a senior. You can see that a lot of weight being put on that in the Minnesota weight uh, program. Short time here in the second period here. Abinator out in front five to four, and Farr is going to have the opportunity to go underneath. And we talk about the path of the NCAA for the Gophers, and, and you know, it's a little bit different than what we see for Iowa and Ohio State. You know, they've got these highly ranked wrestlers. Chris Dardane's number one. Nick Dardane's, I mean, I don't know, since he's been beaten this tournament, I don't know if he might drop down to a five or maybe even a six seed, but uh, Storley finishing fourth here in this tournament. You know, the, I th think that the guy like Schiller is a guy that has been number one ranked at that weight class last year. You know, they have to have a kind of a, they didn't get much, you know, far stepping up was it was a nice addition here uh, for the Gophers, but they didn't get much out of the rest of the uh, of the of the team. Wansick, Lisek, guys like that have to uh, step up even if they're able to. You know, Lisek may not, not even qualify their 25 pounder, but a, a shorter list of guys. But this might be one of those years where five All Americans wins the title. I like the look of Minnesota's uh, heavyweight as well. Uh, oh, uh, Krells, Krells has, yeah. And he'll be in there uh, competing at the NCAA championships, which are March 19th to the 21st at the Scott Trade Center in St. Louis. There's Jay Robinson in the background. And, you know, you can't say enough about what Jay has meant to wrestling to the Minnesota program. Oh, he's just phenomenal. You know, they were number three in attendance this year, again. Uh, always get great following with the goal. I, I love their fans, to be honest with you. The, the na national duels, you know, they got beat out in the first round. and you know, Stayed they, around. Their I fans saying. stayed around. I know that because I was out with them that <laughs> night. So, But they were back in the, in the morning the next day. Uh, so just, just people who love wrestling, as, as all these Big Ten schools, their fans do. And 
Well, but, you, and you were talking about being out with it. It's part of the theology of wrestling. I mean, it really is. My, I mean, as far my as next book. Yeah, right? there you so, go. I mean, and, and yeah. uh, it's 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 relationships and and it's uh, perspective and philosophy. And there's one of the deans in his yeah. 29th year, Jay there, Robinson. There's nothing more fun than spending a, a weekend night at the. Uh, a local watering hole sitting between two tables of Minnesota and Iowa fans, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's all good nature. And nice that, job by Abinader on that two points. Leg. Yep. And you brought up the point. It is all good natured, and the wrestling community certainly in the Big Ten is one that understands the product that they have. Abinader with that takedown out in front, seven to five with 26 seconds left. Can Far respond? Silver Fox in the corner trying to get a little. Uh, Championship medal trying to bring it home right now. He jumps on the whistle, so short time. Abinator has the skills to be able to go ahead and, and you know, put a leg in. He'll drop on the ankle first, it looks like. I like that technique of coming off the elbow. He's going to give up the escape. There is the escape. It's one point. There's no riding time. Can Far take him down, take Abinator down to win? Abinator's got 17 seconds. Good look at that sophomore. And remember, you can't back straight out. You have to, you know, circle and present yourself. Abinator circling back in. A little bit. Yeah, there comes the warning. warning. Gary Mayab, the head official, gives a warning, and a lot of matches have been uh, won in the last few seconds. Can Far put something together here? The warning against Abinator at the time kicks off, and you mentioned the Silver Fox. That's Joe McFarland, one of the best that Michigan's ever put out. He's the head coach, four-time All-American. His assistant, Sean Bormat, in the corner. They're celebrating Dominique Abinator's Big Ten Championship. There's Mark Chiarella, perhaps the best ever, the three-time NCAA champion from Michigan in the fans. Michigan, a great alumni following, and they have a champion at the 2015 Big Ten Championship.